Welcome back to Prime 5, where we take the five best stories from the last 24 hours involving Nintendo and kind of scrunch them together in about eight minutes. Now, before we get into those stories, hey, this is the Monday edition, so we actually are crunching the last weekend stories into the top five. And we got stories today about Breath of the Wild 2. That's right, Breath of the Wild 2 in the news. We got Sonic Frontiers. We have Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Oh, and apparently a journalist trying to push console wars for some reason, because you know, console warring is is always fun. Let's get into the news. You are watching Nintendo Prime, and at this channel on Monday through Friday, we drop five videos going over the five latest stories in the last 24 hours revolving around Nintendo, the biggest of those stories. We also, on the weekends, end up dropping other types of content, including unboxings and Prime Answers episode that goes out every single Saturday where we answer all of your questions. Questions. If you enjoy Nintendo news and you want to get the latest updates, all you need to do is subscribe to Nintendo Prime. And our first story today deals with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet because we got brand new news with a new trailer dropped yesterday. So the Pokemon company decided to show off competitive play. So terrestrialization is a phenomenon known in the Paldea region that makes Pokemon shining glimmer like gems. Terrestrialization Pokemon shine during battles too. Change your Pokemon's type and turn the tables. The primary feature of terrestrializing in battle is that it changes your Pokemon's type to its Terra type. Pokemon don't outwardly show what their Terra type is until they terrestrialize, a fact that you can use to take opponents by surprise in battle. Combining Terra types with different moves and abilities can open up near infinite strategic possibilities. If a Colossal combines the Steam Engine ability with a Water Terra type, the Pokemon can take less damage and receive a boost to its speed when it gets hit by a Water type move. Terra Blast is a normal move which can be used and learned with a TM. When used by a terrestrialized Pokemon, it becomes a move of the same type as the Pokemon's Terra type and displays its immense might. Use it at the right moment to change the flow of battle. Terra Blast inflicts damage using the attack or special attack stat, whichever is higher for the user. There are new items that can make battles even more exciting. These items can be held by Pokemon to trigger a variety of effects. How you use them may mean the difference between victory and defeat. To use them in conjunction with Pokemon moves and terrestrialization to achieve victory. Mirror Herb. This herb allowed the holder to mirror an opponent's stat increases and boost its own stats, but only once. The Covert Cloak. This hooded cloak conceals the holder, protecting it from additional effects of moves. Loaded Dice. If a Pokemon is holding this item and uses a multi-strike move, it will be more likely to hit more times. A Pokemon that lives with humans. This Pokemon has lived in many households in the Paldea region since ancient times. It has a mild disposition, and people riding Cyclozar are a very common sight. It appears Cyclozar don't mind being ridden because of the warmth of a rider it helps stave off the cold. A body optimized for running. Cyclozar can sprint at over 70 miles per hour. This is again getting into a new mount. And honestly, we just need to get right into the next story because I'm super excited for this one. And folks, right now we get to talk about Breath of the Wild 2. The Breath of the Wild 2 has been in development for a long time. How long, in fact? Well, as of August 19th, so last Friday, it has now been in development longer than any other game. Well, sort of. It's actually just the longest period we have waited for a mainline Zelda release. What do I mean? Because it's not technically the largest gap between console Zelda games. That actually belongs to A Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time, because A Link to the Past released in 1991 and Ocarina of Time released in 1998. That is a period of seven years. But there is a key difference, because in between, in 1993, a little-known game came out called Link's Awakening for the Game Boy, and that is a mainline Zelda title, so it does count. That being said, obviously Ocarina of Time had the longest development cycle, while Breath of the Wild 2 currently has the second longest development cycle, and obviously this is the longest we have gone without a new mainline game. I honestly think that they know the hype levels for Breath of the Wild 2 are absolutely astronomical, and they want to do everything they can to try to meet those expectations, even if I think they've maybe hit some unrealistic levels. Now let's get into our next story. And right now we get to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 3, because it appears that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 may have a problem. I think a lot of the media surrounding Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has been wholly positive, but we can't forget that not everything is perfect. And according to several users on Reddit, it does appear that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 suffers a memory leak. So 
What happened? Well, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 actually has a memory leak as well, and it's been documented by Digital Foundry. What happens to your memory leaks is that it ends up ramping up the CPU, GPU, and RAM to levels that normally wouldn't be needed because the game is letting certain information sort of leak out of its code base that isn't supposed to leak out. This happens quite often with Chrome, a popular browser, uh, especially on desktop, because Chrome is really, really purpose-built for her. Android at this point, so when you use it on desktop, there are memory leaks that lead to really, really high RAM usage. Obviously, it's going to be Chronicles 2 as well, and this can affect frame rates and, and other things in the game. And what appears to be happening, according to people uh, that are documenting this now, the memory leak will affect the gameplay when doing longer play sessions, so that you have to be playing for a while. Frames will stay in the low 20s, and there'll be musical glitches and skips in the music begin to happen. Users are claiming that if you completely close and reopen the game in the exact same zone or area doing the same thing, the frame rate goes back up to 30, and the musical glitches and skips stop. This isn't as noticeable early in the game as the battles in world is less intensive, but it becomes much more noticeable later in the game as things ramp up. While this isn't officially documented at this point, there are several people in a growing Reddit thread making complaints and notes about it. This obviously is something that we would like to see patched and dealt with. They didn't really do much with it in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, so maybe they won't be able to address it here. You often have to wonder if it's an issue with the engine itself or some other core fundamental thing. And the fact that you could just reboot your game is obviously an easy fix. This is actually how you fix memory leaks temporarily in all situations. You know what? Enjoy your Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Most of us probably won't run into this issue unless you're playing for long play sessions, which I suppose the JRPG encourages that. I know that when I uh, the old uh, bedroom, I like to go extra long, if you know what I mean. Now on to our next story. Apparently, we might have a leaked release date for Sonic Frontiers, along with a little bit of additional information. What am I talking about here? Well, according to a uh, Taiwanese retailer, Sonic Frontiers has actually been listed for November 15th. Now look, we get retailer listings all the time. They don't necessarily mean anything. Why this one's notable, though, is that it actually has DLC listed next to its listing and DLC has not even been announced for Sonic Frontiers. So possibly this retailer has access to information that's going to be available to sell day one, such as day one DLC. So that's just something to keep in the back of our minds, not official confirmation or anything. But also notable about Sonic Frontiers is there will be a brand new trailer dropping tomorrow during opening night live hosted by Jeff Keighley for Gamescom. Yes, you will be able to catch that trailer right here because we will be live reacting to the entirety of opening night live and going over a little bit of a pre-show over what we actually expect to see uh, post-show you know all of our expectations there all of our reactions your guys's reactions as well that might cause a delay in our news video tomorrow but that's okay we'll still get our normal prime 5 video out tomorrow as well also it's notable that sonic frontiers for the first time ever will be playable publicly at gamescom so we're going to see a ton of footage and impressions throughout the rest of this week and i for one can't wait because i would like to see some independent impressions from actual verified gamers i don't know what, what's a verified gamer anyway Anyways, I'm a verified gamer, everybody. You want, I don't know, you want a cookie? And our last story deals with a journalist who's a pretty experienced journalist at that, making a massive mistake that's really pushing console wars right now. And you guys know how much I detest console wars. And it has to do with the PlayStation 5 and, ironically, the Nintendo Switch. Because... The headline is messed up. So next gen player on Twitter stated that PlayStation 5 is the best selling system according to the MPD. He linked to a report on his website. Next Gen Player is a former writer for Walmart Gaming and Best Buy. He has a massive following of over 60 thousand followers on Twitter and runs a moderately successful gaming news website focused on news, reviews, and a few opinions. In the article on his news, it not only shows Matt Piscatella's tweets, which ironically states which is the best-selling platform for the last month and in 2022, with PS5 being the leader in dollar sales. He also correctly reports on the information inside the article itself, noting it is behind the switch in unit sales, but leads in dollar sales, and he repeats this a number of times. This is one of those cases where the title was intentionally misleading, and the issue with this sort of title is that, well, sure, Everyone clickbaits to a certain degree, arguing something like this that is a mistruth merely pushes console warring even harder than it already is. Switch has been the leader in sales for 43 of the last 44 months on the MPD, losing a singular time to PlayStation 5 last year. The term best-selling is universally used for units sold, not dollar sales. It's fine, it's cool, 
It's just the person has a notable following, a big enough one that a lot of people were liking this and retweeting it like it was true and quote tweeting it like it was true. And it's just, I, I don't like misleading information because, look, I know I'm a Nintendo guy and I got my bias, but man, oh man, oh man, we don't need any more console warring over misinformation. That being said, I am Nintendo Rubble Gents from Nintendo Prime, and that was the Prime 5 for your Monday. Uh, what is it? Uh, August 22nd. We back at it again tomorrow with the five biggest stories from the last 24 hours. Hope you enjoy this stuff. Be sure we get into a few giveaways we have down in the pinned comment, and I'll catch you guys next time.